Hello everyone, this is Eric from The Power to Teach. What I'm going to show you today in this quick tip is how to make lined paper using Microsoft Word. Like I said, it's a very simple tip, but I hope that it saves you some time in the classroom. Now, I like to give my students uh, a lot of writing prompts, and when I do, I prefer that they write on the white paper that is similar to the paper that you get out of copy machines and out of your laser printer. The writing paper that schools often buy for st students is usually a darker color and it's made from recycled materials so it's flimsy and it has low contrast when you write on it with a pencil so it can make it difficult to read and because of the low contrast sometimes students will write over the same letter three or four times which then you know makes the paper rip apart so I try to avoid it whenever I can so my answer is to get a piece of is to take a document put my writing prompt in it uh, this is the simple writing prompt and then here I will put my lines in and what I do is go to insert table and I start off with a 1 by 2 table and the reason I do that is because if we start off with a 1 by 1 table then sometimes things can get weird Microsoft Word is um, not designed to do a lot of the things the teachers try to do with it uh, most teachers would probably be better off using Microsoft Publisher or a similar program like that, but not every teacher or every school gives their gives access to Microsoft Publisher, so we work with what we have. So here I've created my table, and I'm going to click on this little up and down arrow up there. What that does is it selects the entire table. I'm going to right-click on it, and I'm going to go down to Table Properties. And here it automatically brings up row, and rows are the ones that go horizontally across the paper of course so I'm gonna set my height at half an inch which works out for me depending on the grade of your students you might need bigger or smaller depending on if you're using kindergarten students or if you have high school seniors so this is gonna make sure that each row in my table is, a, is exactly a half inch tall and the reason I do that is because if I say if I leave it on at least a half inch tall and sometimes if I'm adding lines down near the very bottom of the paper Microsoft tries to keep the rows a half inch tall and it can cause problems as it gets near the bottom of the page border it starts making some calculations and starts getting its mind of its own setting it as exactly a half inch um, seems to help alleviate that problem so I click on OK and as you can see I now have two rows in my table and each row is a half inch tall so now what do we do about these borders because of course we don't want these borders around there all we want is lines for our students to write on so up here where it says borders and if for some reason this tab is not already open it'll be over here under table tools and design if you somehow manage to get off of it completely just right click on there again and it'll open up the table tools tab and you click on design and this drop down box here you can see we have bottom border, top border, left border, right border. We want to get rid of everything except the bottom border. So I'll click on these one at a time. And as I do, those borders disappear from our table. And now, as you can see, we have a writing prompt that has two lines underneath of it. Of course, I want my students to write a little bit more than that. So I put this in here and click anywhere in here and then press tab. And every time I press tab, I get a new line. And if I'm done with this writing prompt, I just click down here, which takes me below the table, and I can start a, a new. I can start a new writing prompt. Writing prompt, and then repeat the process if I want to, or I could simply go up here, copy, and paste. Now I have two writing prompts with lines in them for the students to write on because we all know how important it is for our students to have lines to use as guides. Now I hope this has helped you. Like I said, this isn't any sort of groundbreaking Nobel Prize winning um, science, but I think that it is something that many teachers might overlook. So I hope this has helped you save some time and in the future the Power to Teach will be bringing you more time-saving technology tips. Until then, I hope you have a great day and have fun in your classroom.